Hi, I'm John, the worldwide Trueke engineer, Termel, and no one has done more to spread the idea of barter throughout Latin America than Hugo, the Trueke engineer, Chavez. Of all the, there's a handful of politicians in the world to whom I would offer my respect, and Hugo Chavez is one of them. I've seen the revolution will not be televised, and I cannot help but applauding on a regular basis. So I salute you, Hugo Chavez, and this is about what Hugo's done to teach his Latin America the Trueque way out of their problems. I did a search for Chavez and Trueque, which is barter in Spanish, and I noticed on June 27th we had Chavez y el Trueque, a YouTube video showing people how to do barter. And then November 13, 2006, Economia del Trueque, Modelo Chavista 2. So, someone else talking about barter money. And then on December the 9th, 2006, a guy going Trueque Bolivariano. So, those Bolivarian circles are doing Trueque, but they're using their own community currencies. And then finally, September 7, 2007, Hugo Chavez explains Trueque, explains barter. So... Of all the leaders who've been elected in the whole planet, no one has done more for setting up barter networks than Hugo Chavez. Now, Hugo Chavez is an engineer, has a master's in engineering. So, you'd sort of expect he'd be one of the sharper ones, right? Well, then finally, Venezuela's alternative currencies, tokens of utopia, the story. December the 18th, 2008, just last year. And from The Economist, mmm... A different take on the cashless society. A kilo of ripe papaya from Oliva Unamo's stall at the community market in Rio Chico, a small town in the coastal region of Barlovento, will cost you three cimarrones. For the same price, you could buy six sticks of sugar cane at the stall next door, but your cimarrones won't go far at the shops down the road. The Cimarron is one of at least ten alternative currencies in different parts of Venezuela. They have the blessing of Hugo Chavez, the country's left-wing president. They will help do away with capitalism and hence combat poverty, he says. Well, actually, they'll do away with monopoly capitalism, but it permits a communistic style of capitalism where everybody gets to play. So it won't do away with capitalism. It's going to enhance the good kind of capitalism where everybody can play for their own benefit. So, not monopoly, yeah, get rid of, but not capitalism. I'm a capitalist. I want to keep it. And hence, combat poverty, yes, he says. But none of these tokens can be exchanged for the Bolivar, the country's legal currency. Oh, no, what a mistake! That's exactly why the provincial bonds in those Argentinian provinces worked so well, was that when people had to leave the place, they could cash in for some federal funds needed out there. But while they're around here, they use the local stuff. Big mistake. So, their use is limited to prosumers. You have to bring something to sell before you can actually buy anything with them. Well, that's like not giving anybody any credit. Even at the time dollars and the hours system, they give people credit. you got to let them sign some IOUs, pledge 100 hours up front. They shouldn't have to bring something. Their promise of an hour's work should be enough. So, the markets where they circulate are modest affairs. Well, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're making it small. At Rio Chico, only a dozen or so products were on sale, but that's not the point. It's magic, says Pablo Mayo, Mayoyo, an Argentine who's advising Venezuelans on these schemes. When you take away money, which is the cause of almost all the great evils in the world, people relate to each other in a different way, by cooperating, not competing. Yeah, but you are using money, just a nice kind of money. I used to say that Money that was friendly. If I lent you a thousand bucks, no interest, would you call that friendly credit? Yeah. Well, if the government does it, call it social credit or sociable credit if you're not paying any interest. So right now we have anti-sociable credit because it forces us to fight it out to the death. Musical chairs with money, anti-social credits. There's a difference when you're using social credits. And like you said, people relate in a different way by cooperating when everybody's got a chair at the end of the game. The revolutionary spirit seems to be flourishing among the prosumers of Bottle of Ento. I grow coconuts, says Angenia Hernandez, in the shops. They cost 3.5 bolivars each, 163, at the official exchange rate, but we're selling them at the equivalent of 1.5. It is, she said, a way of putting an end to commercial fascism. Okay, well, anyway, it's 
a way of enticing people to join, I suppose. Lowe's and Totney's, two towns with radical traditions in southern England, both have community pounds aimed at encouraging shoppers to buy local products, but they can be exchanged for sterling. So it doesn't hurt to let your currency be exchanged for sterling, Hugo. Come on, do it better. You're an engineer. Uh, the other difference in Venezuela is that the alternative currencies are not local initiatives, but have been decreed from the top as part of Mr. Chavez's drive to impose 21st century socialism. But it's going to eliminate the counterfeiting problem they had in Argentina if you got Hugo's police treating community currency like the real stuff and protecting it too. Yeah, Hugo. Few people in Rio Chico, small though it is, had heard of the market. Well, no wonder. It's meant to get small. You got any spare? No, I'm starving. Well, you can't play yet. Get something. The prosumers were busted in by the government from nearby villages. According to Jose Guerra, the former head of research at the country's central bank, the Cimarrones are a regressive echo of Venezuela's semi-feudal past, in which landowners paid their serfs in tokens that could be exchanged only for goods and produced and sold on their estates. Mr. The company store. Mr. Chavez has spoken about requiring farmers to sell a proportion of their products to the prosumer markets. Well, you shouldn't have to force them if you just made it equal to your and exchangeable with federal currency. Then they'll do it naturally like they did in Argentina. So, boy, so far only about 2,000 people have signed up for them. You got a rocket engine and you're making a dinky toy. On past form, the president will eventually lose interest. Don't you dare, you got an answer. The Cimarron, a curious circular cardboard token illustrated with a picture of a runaway slave, seems destined to end up as a collector's curiosity. Not if he does it right and fixes the errors he built in his system. But in December the 20th, seven countries talk single currency. Venezuela calls for IDB exodus. And actually the article was on November the 26th. And it says seven countries, including two Caribbean islands, signed a document today paving the way for the establishment of a single currency. Among them, Cuban state media reported today. Uh, so the political leaders of Venezuela, Bolivia, Honduras, Nicaragua, Ecuador, Cuba, and Dominica issued a final declaration on Wednesday that gives the green light to the creation of a single currency called the Sucre that will initially circulate virtually, Grandma said. Sucre means Sistema Unico de Compensación Regional. So a regional system of unique compensation. So just like the Let's has started out by everything being done in the virtual world, no paper currency, because Michael Linton was worried about being attacked by the government under Section 319 of the Bank Act that said it's illegal to use anything in exchange, you know, as a paper money when we had Canadian Tire money and all sorts of coupons. But still, Michael ran the first Let's as a virtual system for a while to establish they were legal before people started saying, hey, why don't we start issuing some chips and that way we can do chips instead of having to report every transaction to the cage. And that's what they eventually did. So this starts virtual. It says the final declaration of the third extraordinary summit of the Bolivarian alternative for the people of our America. Hey, how about counting us in in Canada? We'll barter with you too. Uh, better known by its Spanish acronym ALBA, that Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez pioneered to replace the free trade area of the Americas was approved today in Caracas. Hey, let us join! The declaration approves the creation of a single monetary zone and a chamber of compensation payments. They're creating their own chips and saving the interest. <clears throat> so the creation of the monetary block would be accompanied by a reserve fund. <laughs> well, that's the sterling. Uh, financed by contributions from member countries to sustain investment policies for development, according to the document read by President uh, Hugo Chavez. ALBA, together with Ecuador, the Venezuelan president said, will create a single monetary zone. The summit participants were convened urgently by Chavez to evaluate capitalism's financial crisis. Yeah, they got no money here. The men expressed concern over the absence of real proposals to solve the crisis that threatens the people of Americas. The declaration also expresses the desire on the part of ALBA members and Ecuador to get out of the monopoly of the U.S. dollar as the currency for international trade. Yeah, switch to something better. The leaders committed themselves to putting forward regional proposals to make international financial bodies independent and to activate structures within the United Nations to respond to the challenge of the world. Unilets! It's already on the declaration, the Millennium Declaration. Just say you'll endorse it and set it up. 
time-based currency acceptable in your country like it's acceptable in ours. <sighs> Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez Frias, who is also welcoming Russian President Dmitry Medvedev tonight, also called on the countries of the region to drop out of the Inter-American Development Bank, commonly known as the IDB and the Andean Development Corporation, better known as CAF. During the meeting, Chavez accused them of succumbing to local pressure and of being a tool of the United States and called on his colleagues to drop out of the bank. As Chavez said it's become another tool of the empire, which is what he and many Cubans call the United States of America. He said the U.S. uses it as an instrument of political pressure to impose conditions. Let us get out of that bank and form our own bank that we manage ourselves, our people. I hope you print your own chips and don't have to borrow them from them. We have been walked over enough, he said at today's Alba summit. Chavez told the summit that the region should not wait for the silly IMF and World Bank to come to solve our problems. Yeah.